This deep dive into the Pretty Little Liars teaser posters from a retrospective perspective throughout the years may include spoilers and hot takes. Viewer discretion is advised. You might not be able to judge a book by its cover, but that sure doesn't apply to television series. When it comes to the magical world of television, teaser posters or teaser images are part of the promotional materials used to generate excitement for a TV show before it airs. These posters often feature the entire cast and can even go the abstract route with insight into the themes and storylines of the show so that potential viewers brace themselves in anticipation of a pilot that would have them hooked for many episodes and seasons to come thereafter. Talk about setting up the visual brand identity of an IP without even showing an episode, let alone a trailer. But what producers, executives, and marketing teams don't realize is that when your TV show's brand identity starts strong thanks to a teaser poster, it tarnishes the show's legacy when that same brand identity slowly starts going out with a whimper. And that's exactly what happened with Pretty Little Liars. Season 1 the season that unleashed chaos viewers didn't even know existed. Like, literally set the stage for a show that would gaslight, gatekeep, and girl boss all of us for seven years straight, and left us thirsty for more after each episode ended. For anyone familiar with this series, Pretty Little Liars is a show about four high school friends who are being cyberstalked by an anonymous texter named A after the disappearance of Rosewood High's Queen Bee, Allison De Laurentiis. Now imagine it's 2010, you're getting ready for summer because school's starting to wind down, and you come across a trailer in April about this show. BT dubs, I'm going to be reacting to the trailer in a separate video, so hit that subscribe button so you know when it's out and whose channel to find it on. And you start seeing this poster on the Pretty Little Liars book cover at your local Barnes & Noble or Indigo bookstore. Because like, this poster legitimately changed lives, and if not plural, it changed mine. Here you have four they may pass for teenagers because the casting director said so girls dressed in their best morning attire with cheeky smiles covered in soil from what could be a grave that they were either digging up or filling in. The girl in the middle sees this as a time to totally not read the room, or graveside to be precise. Sorry, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. And she gives in to her intrusive thoughts and serves crackhead energy by posing for a selfie while she hushes at the camera, implying she's keeping some big twisted secret on behalf of her and her posse. Now take that disturbing pic and add a tagline that reads, never trust a pretty girl with an ugly secret. What? Like, hello, talk about iconic. When I saw this poster, I immediately knew I wanted to not only watch this show every Tuesday night, but that I wanted to force my parents to move us all to the fictional town of Rosewood so I could study with Spencer, shoplift with Hannah, dye my hair with Aria, navigate feelings about my crushes with Emily, and get bullied, abused, threatened, and blackmailed by Allison the Queen de Laurentiis. Yeah, I have since gotten a lot of therapy and now understand that I cannot move to fictional towns in America that are riddled with murderers, stalkers, and evil girls who know their way around a cell phone better than engineers at Samsung and Apple combined. And when I tell you everyone in the target audience was talking about the show, I mean everyone in the target audience was talking about this show. Enough so that the premiere not only pulled in 2.47 million viewers to give viewers a taste of what a Desperate Housewives for Teens would look like, but the first season accrued more viewers over the year and ended with a strong 3.64 million viewers for its season finale. While it's obvious that other types of marketing went into the show that made it the success that it was, including recirculating the books, promotional photos you'd come across on social media, websites, print media, episode teasers, promos, tweets, cast interviews, and selling the show internationally, all of that would not have slapped as hard as it did had it not been for this one poster that started it all. And boy did they capture the energy of the show. So what happens when you get a renowned poster for a television series that is turning out to be the year's biggest new hit? Well, first of all, you use it as the official cover for the complete first season DVD, and secondly, you follow up with an even more legendary poster and promotional materials to serve as the brand identity viewers will be thinking of anytime they think of Pretty Little Liars Season 2, which the show was renewed for on January 11, 2011. Season 2 with season two, the storylines get darker, the characters get crazier, the writing gets tighter, the mysteries get wilder, and the death threats get death threatier. A is not messing around and means business. Just like the season two poster meant hella business. This is quite legitimately the best poster of the show, I don't care, argue with the wall, because the concept developer, photographer, photoshopper, actresses, makeup artist, lighting coordinator, and the powers that be knew that rent was due and decided to deliver like no other TV show has delivered before. We are greeted by the four liars as they're sitting down for some high tea after what looks like to be a hard day of digging up graves and committing crimes. Before we get into themes, let's just take a moment to appreciate the attention to detail with the cucumber sandwiches because it's totally not a high tea if there's no cucumber sandwiches and the different types of grapes. On top of that, the antique table and chairs with the quaint tea set makes me also want to go on a grape digging spree if the end result is eating fruits and sandwiches with my besties on furniture that costs more than my bathroom. Thematically speaking, the viewer who hath set his eyes upon this bill can see the liar's growth and what can be expected from the season. 
Hannah's retained her cheekiness, which lets the viewer know she'll still be a menace in serving one-liners. Can you walk any softer? Oh, please, Jenna can't hear us. She's blind. Hey, Jenna would kill and eat her own mother to get back at us. Whereas Emily has traded her cheekiness for resilience in the face of who knows what A is gonna do. It's the muscle cream with HGH in it, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Spencer's gotten on a path of curiosity that could unlive several cats, and Arya retains her classic snitches get stitches stance, reaffirming that she'll be telling the most lies because after all, she is the best liar. Which one of you girls is best at hiding the truth from someone who's close to you? Arr. Wow, really? Thanks, guys. The same tagline about not trusting pretty girls that are ugly on the inside still stays because why fix something that isn't broken? The shovel signifies buried secrets and uncovering dirt on A's game simultaneously. The soiled clothes signify that none of the liars are getting out of this clean, and the tea party on a gloomy day signifies that these girls will be keeping up appearances no matter what considering they're all dolled up and we know how Allison treated her friends. Let's not forget, Allison played just as dirty as these girls look. Imagine having metaphors, allusions, references, and implications like that all in one poster, and you already know PLL is going to go down in history as one of the best teen mystery shows out there. Sequels rarely do better than the first, but Pretty Little Liars' second season poster definitely outdid the first season's poster, and was also used as the official season 2 DVD cover. Season 3. But like with anything in life, sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. And with the A reveal at the end of season two, season three found itself somewhat rebooting the show. With the first episode of season three setting up the story while borrowing elements of the girls hanging out and drinking just like they did in the first episode. For Pretty Little Liars, just know this. If the girls are together and drinking and passing out and then waking up to find someone missing or murdered, it means a major A had either just been revealed in the previous episode and or the show is just starting. So the show rebooting itself from that point on is just trying to shift the focus to a whole new mystery while still trying to focus on some questions that we have left unanswered. So season three had to keep viewers hooked, some of whom may be considering checking out since A was supposedly revealed, which would indicate an end to the mystery to the average viewer. So while the writers decided to take the show back to its roots while they set up a new mystery of who killed Maya, who's the new A, and if Allison is still alive by borrowing clues from the pilot in season one, the marketing team decided to do the same with the audiences by utilizing promotional photos from season one to serve as a season three official poster. It's honestly incredibly fortuitous that this poster works out for the events of season three as a natural progression of where season two left off. Here we have the liars looking as girl boss as ever. Emily's resilience has an aura of confidence, which honestly quite well serves her bad B arc in season 3A, and tops it off with the confidence she gets by the end of season 3B after she's killed Maya's murderer and found out that her bestie and beau might still be alive. Shay Mitchell? More like Slay Mitchell. Then we have Hannah, looking like she's done with this BS, but she's two seasons too early. Although her pose here shows her proactivity in seasons 3 and onwards when it comes to getting to the bottom of who A is. Arya isn't shushing the viewer anymore, which is why I'm feeling pretty confident in running my mouth about how they've all been serving in this pick, but she's just giving the right kind of try-me attitude needed to survive the season, especially given that Meredith goes crazy and then locks up Arya in the basement. Yeah, the storylines in the show are like absolutely wild. Spencer's just got that inquisitive analytical look down, so props to Troy and Belisario for not only being an incredible actress, but seeing the future far enough to know that season one's promotional materials would need to be used for season three and requires her versatility ASAP. The A spray painted in the background serves as a metaphor for A quite literally looming ominously over the liar's lives, and while the poster doesn't tell as good a story as the first and second season's posters, it's got a kick butt caption with, time to bring your A game. Like, these girls are ready to throw down. This poster also became the official season 3 DVD cover. But wait! There's more! This season also had a bonus poster in addition to the promotional materials. Enter the first ever Pretty Little Liars Halloween poster. Yes, I know it's just recycled from the first season, but that's the whole point as far as I'm concerned. They took the season one poster and dressed it up like a Halloween poster. It really doesn't get more meta than putting on a costume on a poster. So shout out to ABC Family for marketing the crap out of the second Halloween episode, which by the way, had no business setting the stakes higher than the season two Halloween episode. I mean, hello, Arya was literally trapped in a crate with a dead body, guest starring Adam Lambert, by the way, sorry, I had to throw that in because this man's voice is unreal, and getting all the liars to board a murder train in the spirit of terror train. Nightmare fuel alert. Season 4. By season 4, dedicated watchers were starting to wonder where the story was going, considering season 3 had more questions than it did answers. So this next poster actually served as a good reminder to clue in viewers what the focus was going to be. Redcoat. 
And they really wanted to drive that point home because when the Pretty Little Liars season four poster came out, it had all four of the liars dressed up in red coats, the infamous outfit of the character, well, literally named Redcoat, who the liars believe to be Allison or someone who looks like Allison. A trend started by season three that unfortunately ended up carrying over to season four, the posters no longer told as effective a symbolic and metaphorical story that would have viewers' minds subliminally deciphering what the season or even the show would entail at that point. To someone who hasn't been keeping up with the show or has just recently heard about it, this poster won't necessarily pull them in because they have no idea what to make of it. With seasons one and two, you can at least make assumptions about what the soiled clothes and faces, shovels, gravesite, funeral attire, etc. are about. But by seasons three and four, only dedicated fans would understand references like A spray painted on a wall or all four pretty little liars wearing red coats because only dedicated fans know about these characters. Don't get me wrong, I love this poster, especially the Liars Unite caption, and let me just say whoever was in charge of making these red coats was probably hungry all day because they ate with that design, but the poster overall leaves little room for analysis and inference on what the season and or show holds aside from the red coat reference. This poster would then be used for the official season 4 DVD cover. But not to fret, season 4 is also the first season to have a second official poster. Contrary to the season 4A poster, which brands the episodes of the summer season, season 4B's poster brands the episode spanning the winter season. This poster is a departure from what made the posters of Pretty Little Liars so unique and mysterious, as it quite literally gives us nothing. No, really, there is nothing about this poster that gives viewers room to make guesses about future storylines or give any insights to new viewers about what the show could possibly be about. All it tells us is that the liars have their eyes covered, which just leaves us with a weak metaphor of the liars looking but not really seeing who Redcoat and or A is. The new truth, new enemy, new year tagline is pretty good though, considering we learned that Allison is alive, that Ezra is the new enemy, although it kind of falls flat with the new year because the liars are still trapped in a never ending November since season 3. I'm not even kidding, the timeline in the show makes no sense, and it's still senior year as far as the student body of Rosewood High is concerned. Next, season 5. As far as posters go, season 5 is where the downfall of the visual branding of the show really becomes apparent. The saddest part is, this season has the second most amount of official posters too, and as a result of having too many cooks in the kitchen, it hurt the branding and what viewers would expect from the show. Total side note, it also doesn't help that writing-wise, the show is jumping many dolphins and working its way up to sharks. Actually, you know what, let's instead elaborate on that side note because it's starting to feel like it's a very non-side note note. Alison De Laurentiis is back from the grave because apparently she wasn't dead this whole time. Now with the writers trying to figure out how to handle Alison joining the main cast, it doesn't surprise me that it would be confusing to feature Alison on promotional posters and material since it would spoil the show for new viewers and make existing viewers think that Alison would be safe as a character even though her character dies in the books. Not only did season 5A have all five of the liars' faces as masks floating side by side, with Allison's mask half shattered, but it departed from the format of having the liars standing or sitting around. It also doesn't leave much room for storytelling or coming up with theories about the new season. Like, oh, everyone is who they say they are except Allison because her mask is shattered? That's way too basic, and at this point all the Pretty Little Liars viewers are like super sleuths. Seasons 1 and 2 posters gave us drama, sass, character expressions that match character journey throughout the season, scenery, graveyard paraphernalia, killer outfits, soiled clothes and faces, and now we have floating faces with a smoky backdrop. This is no longer a show about four girls with secrets and a stalker to match, but a tragedy where the original visual storytelling is taking a back seat for what appears to be an underwhelming homage to the Phantom of the Opera. And for anyone wondering how big of a difference an abstract poster like this can make when compared to the original poster format of the show where the liars are sitting or standing, just wait until we get to the fourth poster of season 5 to see the difference. Luckily, and luckily is a relative term, another season 5 poster finally showed the liars' faces, although they look more like werewolves or vampires than anything else. It also showed Allison on a poster for the show for the first time, which is crazy because she really is that girl, so I'll forgive the format departure of the girl standing around. With all that said, it still doesn't feel like a Pretty Little Liars poster, and I can still remember feeling unsatisfied about the fifth season, with little to nothing to look forward to around the time this poster was released. Then we have the Season 5B poster, and let me tell you right now that at this point, it's not even the show people fell in love with. The visual branding of the show is all over the place. Like, the creatives responsible just can't commit to some kind of format for the liars, having to resort to using clips from the show as part of the poster. That's when you know you're running out of the creative juices needed to keep the promos feeling fresh. Here, you can see it being very obviously uninspired. You'll also notice no Season 5 poster so far has had any taglines, and it's sad to say that the folks in charge of the artwork are starting to lose the plot, but if it makes anyone feel better, the show is starting to lose the plot around this time too. 
But let's focus on something positive. Now remember when I mentioned the difference in impact an abstract poster like this one has in comparison to the original format photos of the standing and sitting liars of seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4? Well, let's take a look at what can be considered a return to form for the Pretty Little Liars poster with the fourth and final Season 5 promotional poster. Another personal favorite, this poster for Season 5 truly saves the day given the three disasters we've reviewed so far. And here's why. Alright, I'm gonna break it down. Number one, format. It sticks to the original format of Pretty Little Liars posters with the girls standing or sitting around while they plot their next move against A. Number two, setting. The setting has something to do with what's going on in the season. While seasons one, two, and four had to do with graveyards and or backyards, and season three's background looked like A's lair, season five setting is indicative of A's dollhouse, which is a huge plot point in the fifth season of the show. Number three, themes and metaphors. And the most important aspect in my opinion, you have themes and metaphors to decipher with the visuals presented. While I made reference to the girls looking dolled up in previous posters, they are quite literally presented as dolls, or even puppets, in this poster. Compared to previous posters, this one has them looking a lot more expressionless, just like dolls would be, implying that this season, the liars might find themselves in a situation where they can't put up as much of a fight against A, and A has more control. Like puppets, they're strung up with the implication that A is keeping a close eye on their actions and could also be potentially playing with them. Pretty much lives up to what we see unfold in the season with the girls' lives falling apart, them getting arrested, and then being held captive in the dollhouse. No, again, I kid you not, there is quite literally a gigantic dollhouse where the girls have to live. The shovel throwback to the earlier seasons again alludes to either burying someone, I'm looking at you Shauna, or digging someone out of their grave. Here's to you Allison. And this time, the high tea spread is less about keeping appearances, but more so about playing along with A's games until they can find a way out of not only captivity, but many of A's traps throughout the season. See how there's so much more to unpack here compared to the other posters? It's genuinely a shame that the marketing team decided to push the other posters in their campaigns and completely neglected this one, considering it was the least used out of all four of them. What's even sadder is that the DVD release of Season 5 ended up using the 5B poster as its DVD cover when this work of art was right here! Yikes, it will forever bother me how underrated and neglected this poster is. But bygones, moving on. Season 6. By season 6, not only had the writers, executive producers, showrunners, and the cast given up on who the heck A was, but the marketing team had also just given up on promo posters. They were so creatively exhausted that they ended up running a competition to get fans of the show to quite literally do the work for them. Honestly, I respect the finesse, but it's tragic that they got paid big bucks and all Heather C got was a shout out. To be honest, I don't know the details of the poster contest, but I really hope they paid her instead of profiting off of her art for the first half of season 6, which by the way revealed who Big A was. I mean, for a season that has a storyline that is that big of a deal, Heather better have made bank. If anyone knows any more details on the poster contest for season 6, leave me a comment down below. Also, a personal shout out to Heather C. Like sis, you made it in the big leagues, you literally created a poster that was mass marketed for one of the biggest shows of its time. Kudos to you. While it isn't my favorite poster, I will say that a lot of hard work went into this, and I'm glad it put respect on Mona's character by featuring her for the first time on a Pretty Little Liars poster. The fact that it took a fan to make this happen tells you all that you need to know about how disconnected the marketing and promotions team was in regards to the fans, and that they were just running out of steam in general. Again, really missing the taglines, the last one being on the fourth season poster, but it is what it is. Now, Pretty Little Liars was going through some creative changes that would be evident when 6B premiered in 2016. With Big A finally revealed, the writers left viewers with a time jump where we saw liars who were no longer teenagers who had been stuck in high school for the past six years, yes, literally six years, but were grown adults dealing with a new but assumedly A-like enemy. As fate would have it, ABC Family was also going through some changes, ditching the family-friendly aspect of their brand and name and changing it up to Freeform, a channel more focused on telling stories geared towards young adults and adults as opposed to teenagers and family audiences. So before Pretty Little Liars came back for season 6B, fans of the show had a reignited passion for what to expect from the series with this poster fueling theories that would only be put to rest after episode 11 of season 6 premiered. 
Let me just say, this poster is iconic and a return to form for the Pretty Little Liars marketing team, mostly because it took the original poster format of the liar standing or sitting around and improved it to reflect a darker, mature depiction of the show while still telling a story. Here we have adult liars wearing Lady Gaga's line of mourning attire if she were ever to go down that route, walking in heels on grass while carrying a heavy coffin, not because it's relevant, but because that's incredibly impractical. But holy heck, does this poster serve? Curve. Like, let's take a look at why it lives up to the original poster style and how it improves certain aspects. Let me break it down. Number one, format. Not only are the girls standing, but they are walking. Like, oh my god, we have caught them in action either right before they commit a crime, i.e. running away with the coffin, right after they have finished committing the crime, i.e. they have stolen the coffin and are making a stylish getaway, or in the process of committing a crime, i.e. they decided that their coffin full of dead bodies and secrets is coming home with them. And oh, looky here, it seems we have upgraded from four to five girls on an official poster that isn't floating heads and is official enough to be used for a DVD release. A huge welcome to Miss Alison De Laurentiis Esquire herself, who is making a head-to-toe appearance. Also, shout out to the return of the taglines, reading, are you strong enough to carry your secrets? Good stuff leaving it as a question, because now you're engaging anyone who interacts with the poster. I mean, seriously, what is their answer going to be? Number two, setting. The girls have traded getting their hands dirty in soil for grassier pastures. Talk about a graveyard upgrade. Don't get me wrong, it seems pretty obvious that the girls still have a graveyard club card. They're just swiping it for points at a much fancier location. Number three, themes and metaphors. This is my favorite part, mainly because of how well the poster does telling fans a story in anticipation of the show post hiatus and leaving clues along the way. It's giving season one and two posters, and trust me, that is a compliment. For starters, the expressions of all the girls are covered by their glasses, which is perfect because at this point we have no idea what their intentions are going to be in 6B. We also have a coffin tagging along with them, and oh, surprise, surprise, Allison isn't in it because she's literally helping them carry it. But wait, then who's in the coffin? Is it Mona? Is it Bethany? Is it Charlotte? Is it someone we haven't met? We had no idea. But we can determine that whether the coffin is symbolic, i.e. the liars carrying the burden of their secrets as adults, or literal, i.e. OMG, there's literally a dead body in there that the liars are burying themselves, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation for as insane a show as this, where there were liars who were quite literally trapped in a gigantic dollhouse to be A's playthings for life. Like, who knows what kind of unhingedness the writers had in mind for 6B. The limit does not exist! For rebooting a show come the new season, the marketing and promotions team did a fantastic job in reviving their creativity and delivered an incredible poster to get the hype train moving again. The creative writing team, however, officially jumped the shark with the A reveal, considering it was riddled with inconsistencies and plot holes that left a lot of fans unsatisfied. So while visual branding was as good as Pretty Little Liars in its early years, the writing left little to be desired and it definitely affected viewership numbers moving forward. Regardless, let's focus on the positive because this kick-butt poster ended up being the official sixth season DVD cover. Before we move on to season 7, there was one more poster we almost forgot to cover. This poster shows us the liars standing, sitting, and leaning around, which honestly meets the criteria for a great Pretty Little Liars poster based on the high standards set by seasons 1 and 2. It's also pretty obvious that because they were going to be adults and heavily inspired by the show I'm about to mention, the creative team borrowed the concept from Desperate Housewives' seventh season promotional posters, with a new liar added to the visuals in the same style as Vanessa Williams being added as another housewife, similar lighting, backdrop of the town the story takes place in, and some minor implications about the plot with dirt pouring out of the car Spencer's sitting in. This implication of trouble really mirrored Renee's character looking like she'll be stirring up trouble as an Edie replacement. What's weird, though, is that there's no Pretty Little Liars logo. I mean, yes, this show was very popular in its day in terms of viewers, averaging about 2.5 million viewers per episode up until season 5, but it was no Desperate Housewives, which was averaging 16.5 million viewers. It is very strange of the marketing team to retain the lack of a logo aspect from Desperate Housewives, especially since Pretty Little Liars at this stage was going through so many creative changes and losing viewers in the process, because everyone knew who Big A was, and fewer people wanted to stick around to see how much more inconsistent the writing would get after that questionable reveal. Season 7. And now we're finally at the last season. By this point, the show had stopped pulling 2 to 2.5 million plus viewers on average and was baby are you down, 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 down to around 1.72 million viewers on average and would slump even lower to an average of 1.10 million by the season's end. And what poster did fans have to look forward to between the season 6 finale and the premiere of season 7, you might ask? This one. And again, it was a killer poster. And here's why. Number one, 
format. We have all the girls putting their records on, except their definition for putting their records on is committing crimes, getting in trouble with the law, and being unabashedly confident and justified in their actions. I mean, look at them commit a crime in real time by absolutely killing it in this photo shoot. Allison's giving Queen Bee royalty, please don't breathe the same air as me energy, even though that's totally not what she was doing in the show at this point. Arya looks like she's proud of all of her awful mistakes and totally unembarrassed about the fact that even after all these years, she still found a way to keep her creepy ex of an English teacher near and dear to her. Emily looks like she doesn't regret any of her life choices, and honestly, I don't regret any of her life choices either, because she can do no wrong in my eyes as far as I'm concerned, and Spencer looks like she isn't afraid of putting her brain to use to solve yet another murder mystery, even it's something as ridiculous as her having a twin this whole time, because there's no way the writing would have gotten that bad, right? Right? I can't! Get out! But the coolest part about this poster is that there's one liar missing. Miss Hannah Marin herself. Like what? With this poster, fans really started to wonder if the final season might be the season where a liar finally got bodied by the plot, considering that the core four, Allison, and Mona all survived for six seasons so far. Not having Hannah on the poster is a gigantic departure from the format of having the original four liars on every poster, and lord have mercy does it create anticipation. I'm all for taglines, and the tagline of how far will they go to hashtag save Hannah really adds on to the plot of the show at this point, considering AD kidnapped Hannah, but to be honest, it's just not as snappy a tagline as the previous ones. I also don't like how Shinsia hashtag appears in the poster of a TV series. Like yeah, I know Pretty Little Liars was one of the most tweeted shows back in its time, but it just feels like they're trying too hard putting it on the poster. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Number two, setting. Considering that Rosewood Police at this point has six seasons worth of posters as proof of what kind of illegal stuff the liars have been up to in a graveyard slash backyard slash garden with their trusty shovel, it's no surprise that the new season poster features them in front of a mugshot wall at the local booking facility. Honestly, I'm so glad the creative team is back to coming up with good posters because there's so much story to unwrap here. Number three, themes and metaphors. With the liars finally being placed in front of a booking wall, viewers can interpret that they'll finally get in trouble for their crimes after having gotten away with so many for so long. This also means that there's a high chance that the police will be playing a huge role this season, and when taking that tagline into consideration, it may be that the liars would have to commit some incredible crime to save Hannah, further building suspense for the final season of the show, how it's going to wrap up, and letting the viewers know that all bets are totally off at this point. The expressions on the liars' faces let us know that much like the audience, they are so done with this A, big A, A, D, B, S, and are confident that they'll get to the bottom of this mystery for their own sake, as well as for the sake of the audience's patience and sanity, because seven years of wondering who A is going to be this time is a maddening experience that no psychiatrist can cure. And here's poster number two, which we won't be spending too much time on because it's not that different from the first one we saw. The biggest thing is that it has Hannah in it, because, I mean, there was no way they were going to kill her off. She's a fan favorite for a reason. So there's not much to unpack here aside from the fact that she makes an appearance while the tagline makes a disappearance, which is honestly pretty sad because I would like to see a tagline that didn't just exist for the sake of getting the show trending on Twitter. Oh wait, it's called X now. On the bright side, this poster ended up being the official seventh and final season DVD cover. And then we have poster number three, which feels like a Sephora meets Mac marketing campaign than anything Pretty Little Liars related, if I'm being completely honest. You've got over Photoshop liars, a barely legible logo, triangular masking, and not much of a story going on. Except that there's a huge clue in this poster that saves it from being completely terrible. The only liar to have two eyes showing is Spencer, while all the other liars have their faces covered. And that's because it signifies some double trouble going on with Spencer Hastings, and it's that she has a British twin who she was separated from at birth and who is now trying to ruin her life even though she didn't do anything. No, that's unfortunately not a joke, but shout out to the creative team for putting in this big of a clue for one of the last posters to come out for the show. While other posters leave a lot of room for fan theories, this poster is the closest we have to a straight up confession. I also like that we got a really good tagline with liars to the end, because while we know that these liars were never going to be truthers, it's nice to get the obvious stated for why we tuned in week after week to watch this show. We wanted to see what these girls were lying about, what they would lie themselves into, and what they could lie themselves out of. Fun times! And I wish I could say that this was it as far as posters go, but because all good things come to an end, we get served with this situation. The weird thing is, it actually fits the poster format that a majority of the seasons have had so far. The only problem is that the concept and its execution is 
questionable and even the liars know it. Emily's out here looking like, um, are you for real? This is one of the last posters we're doing and you have a standing around like this? I'm glad I got paid and I can call it quits after this dumpster fire of a season. Allison's looking like she's just happy to finally be getting featured on the posters and she's eating up her presence as much as she can. Arya looks like she's exhausted from being A's plaything for the last seventh season. Hannah looks like a mannequin and Spencer looks like a vampire from the 18th century. To be completely real, none of this says pretty little liars to me. You could put the Vampire Diaries or Teen Wolf logo at the top and it would make more sense. See? But the really sad part is that that isn't even my least favorite poster. The worst poster that totally spits in the face of the legacy of this show as far as I'm concerned. That is, if the questionable A reveals with big A and AD have not already spat in the face of the legacy of this show, is the complete series poster. Content warning because the next poster you're about to see is one of the strangest concepts I have ever seen brought to life. Brace yourselves. BAM! <laughs> what in the heck is this? Like, no, seriously, why is this the complete series poster? The fandom must have committed some huge sin collectively to have to deal with this as just punishment. And again, they used it for the complete series set too, which is why I will never be unboxing the complete series set on this channel, because I can't deal with owning a complete series set that looks like this. And before I totally get upset, I'm gonna do that format setting and themes bit that I do so we can judge this poster on merit before we get really unhinged. Number one, format. The liars aren't standing or sitting or leaning. They're just half existing and their bodies are randomly cut off or faded out. They're also dressed up out of the latest BDSM catalog to end up in Detective Wilden's mailbox. Creepy much? Emily doesn't look like herself because she literally has never had that hairstyle on the show and for whatever reason really wants to scratch Spencer's armpit. Spencer on the other hand is wearing armor on half of her body which I'm sure can cause skin irritation so it's no surprise that Emily's lending her a hand. Arya's gone from shushing to eating her own fingers. Hannah wasn't told that this was a photo shoot for a series called Pretty Little Liars and thought it was another Sephora meets Mac campaign now sponsored by Victoria's Secret apparently. And Allison looks like she just got out of bed and is being held at gunpoint to participate in this mess. Number two, setting. While it's supposed to be the board game AD gives to the liars, it's strangely photoshopped in the background. If I were shopping for complete series sets and came across this, I would block it and everyone on it from my memory immediately. Number three, themes and metaphors. There aren't any. There's no themes, metaphors, stories, anything anyone could come up with or would want to come up with without the presence of a gun pointed to their head when looking at this thing except that there's a lucky fifth grader out there who managed to get their Photoshop project be the official poster for the complete series on DVD. Now that that's over, and if it weren't already clear, this is not a great poster, and I can't believe this is what they ended up going with for the complete series set. Now the first impression anyone will have when watching the show on DVD, or even via Apple TV, is this. But they can't all be winners. I'm just disappointed that when the writers ran out of ideas and insulted fans with how they executed the reveals of Big A and AD, the creative designer team further beat a dead horse with a poster that could drive someone to set themselves on fire. Now before we wrap this up, I just want to say that a better complete series set poster would have been the season 5 alternative poster which hadn't been previously used for an official individual DVD release. It's iconic, it shows the girls as teenagers, since up until 6B, the girls were teenagers. Like that's more than half the show. And it intrigues the viewer to tune in and discover what the show is about. Why are these girls sitting around looking dolled up and yet are covered in soil? Why is there a shovel? Who did they bury? Who did they unearth? And why are there puppet strings? Are they dolls? So many questions, and it ignites a curiosity similar to the visual branding of the first two seasons of the show like I mentioned before. Now, I love this show, and even with all its faults, I'll still be rewatching it because it's ridiculously entertaining. I do, however, wish that the people in charge of marketing the show kept the artwork more consistent throughout the years, but it's understandable that a show that was originally supposed to have four seasons and a movie would have some ups and downs in terms of visual branding, along with writing, when it ends up with seven seasons just because of how popular it was. And with that, we wrap up our topic of the day. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and leave me a comment down below on your favorite poster, your least favorite poster, and or what you wish would have been a poster for the seasons and complete series set of the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more original media analysis videos, including retrospectives like this, DVD and Blu-ray unboxings, commentaries, rankings, and more. See you in the next video. Chat with y'all later. Bye!